up, everybody? You're listening to the Custom Roofing and Construction Bearcat pregame show. We'll start off this week by recapping our district victory over the Paradise Panthers last week. Then we'll spend some time talking to Miss Rayanne Strip Matter of the Bearcat Moms. I'm sure a lot of you know her from her many years at the elementary school. And after that interview, we'll dive into our preview of the Whitesboro game coming up. So let's get started by looking back at our 35-21 victory over the Paradise Panthers last Friday night at Massey Stadium. It moves to Pilot Point to 4-2 on the season and 3-0 in district play. The Bearcats are really finding their stride. Record-wise, this season is mirroring last season after a 3-0 start to district. Offensively, we aren't as explosive on the ground this season, but we're making up for it in other ways. John, up to this point in the season, what is jumping out to you most about these Bearcats? Yeah, for me, Ryan, it's been the way the team has bounced back since going one and two to start the season. I mean, I think we all left that that game against Gunner on September seventeenth, um, you know, thinking that our arrow was pointing way down, uh, coming off that that big loss. And the way this team has responded, uh, starting with the win at Peaster, that thirty-one to thirteen win. Uh, back on September 24th, and then our, probably our best all-around effort and performance the next week against Bowie uh, in the 65-18 to 18 win. And then we really, you know, in that game we really played our best game. I'm sure that um, uh, the coaches were proud of that. And then last week against, uh, against that Paradise Bunch, um, I'm sure that the coaches probably saw a lot of things to clean up uh, however, you know, from our standpoint, it looked like the Bearcats took care of business uh, pretty handily, uh, even though the end, at the end of the game it was 35-21. But it was a scrappy Paradise Bunch. It looked to be improved over the, uh, the previous year. And then, um, obviously, you know, the last few receiving games that Aiden Cox has had has been very impressive. And I like the improvement in the running game from, uh, from Ish. Harris, and then, of course, Gage Anderson, not to be confused with Garrett Anderson, and uh, the constant uh, improvement of the running game even out of out of Wyatt Smith. So I think the running game's coming along. Um, but, you know, for me, it's just how they how they responded uh, bouncing back since going one and two to start the season. Before we get to more Paradise stuff, I'm going to go through some team and individual stats for each side. Pilot point, passing, 194 yards, rushing, 373 yards for a total offensive output of 567 yards. Paradise, 154 yards through the air, 205 yards on the ground for 359 yards of total offensive output. Individual stat leaders, Pilot point, Wyatt Smith, 10 and 19 through the air, 194 yards and two touchdowns. Ish Harris, 202 yards on 21 carries, two touchdowns of his own. And Aiden Cox, five five catches, 158 yards, and two touchdowns of his own. On the Paradise side, quarterback Stanton had, was 8 of 22 for 154 yards and one touchdown. He also was the leading rusher with 131 yards and a touchdown on 13 carries. Iglesias was their leading receiver. He had two catches for 84 yards and a touchdown. Going, uh, going in, everything told us this should be a hard-fought, potentially close game. They looked the part before the game, but once we kicked off, I felt like the Bearcats were in complete control from beginning to end. I felt like we dominated more than a 14-point final might indicate. When it comes to you and I being wrong and how we thought this game might go, do you think it was more of the Bearcats doing, or was Paradise maybe not as good as we thought they might be? All right, I think I believe it was a little bit of both. You know, um, that first drive or whatever it was, I thought we were a little fortunate there. Uh, Ish appeared to have lost a fumble. Um, but it was it was called back because I think Paradise was in the in the neutral zone and that negated that play. Uh, but you could see early on that our, our running game there was just something there. And then like I said, Ish, they ended up with 202 and Gage had 108 and then Wyatt had another 63 on the ground. So kind of dominated them um, on the ground there. But um, you know, for me, this Paradise team was was better than the one we saw last year. But for some reason, when they play us, they they just can't seem to establish their offensive identity. Um, you know, there's a, the one kid I keep thinking they're going to hand the ball to, but they never did. It, that, uh, I think it's Hernandez, his last name, a fast kid. We only saw him carry the ball one time. He's super quick, but uh, I've seen him in highlights uh, in previous games, and they, they gave him the ball quite a bit. So I don't know why they went away from some of that stuff and some of their 
uh, jet sweeps to start their offense. Um, and then I was kind of surprised that uh, both kickers, as good as they were, they, they ended up miss, missing a few kicks in the game. Um, but uh, like I said, I think it was a little bit of a little bit of both. Bearcats did, I think, what we expected them to do, and then Aiden continued to have a. Uh, Aiden Cox had another another great game, dominating performance, and then uh, Paradise just didn't seem to be able to find their identity. I don't know if it's what we're doing against them defensively or or what. Well, we're through the easy part of the district schedule. When you start the district schedule with Peaster, Bowie, and Paradise, you expect to be three and zero after you've completed that stretch. But we took care of our business with a 31-13 win over Peaster, 65-24 win over Bowie, and a 35-21 win over Paradise. But now, just a little less than halfway through district, we're going to run into a couple of tough tests. And it starts this week with Whitesboro. We have some interesting things to look at during our Whitesboro preview. But before we do that, we're going to get a quick custom roofing and construction commercial and then do our interview with Miss Ray Ann Strip Matter. So stay tuned for that. Hey Bearcat fans, living in North Texas, you know all about bad weather. When bad weather does strike, look no further than James Floyd's Custom Roofing and Construction. Custom Roofing and Construction has built their business off of quality work and customer referrals. Let their friendly and knowledgeable staff ensure the project runs smoothly from start to finish. You can visit Custom Roofing and Construction on their website, customroofingdallas.com, or give them a call at 214-274-8353. And we're back here on the Custom Roofing and Construction Bearcat pregame show. The, our guest this week is Miss Rayanne Strip Matter, uh, the elementary school principal, or I don't think it's actually the elementary school anymore. It's the Early Childhood Center. Or what, what exactly is it called now? Yes, it's the Pilot Point Early Childhood Center. Yes, yeah, somebody made me aware of that probably just a couple weeks ago. And then, you know, just coincidentally, we're talking to you today. So getting into that a little, um, you and I have never formally met before this, but I moved to Pot Point in the uh, early 2000s. I think I was in the fourth grade, and I've been hearing your name from the kids out, you know, around my age from way back then. So how long have you been a part of the Pot Point School District? I've been uh, in the Pot Point School District for the past 24 years. Um, I've been the principal at the elementary school, which is now the Early Childhood Center, uh, for the last 15 years. Okay. Yeah. So that leads me to my next question, which I think is kind of neat. You know, being that you've been a part of this district for quite a while, you've seen many, I don't want to, no, no, generations kind of, but I was thinking more iterations of like kids go from little bear cubs to the mighty bear cats. How cool is it for you to see the young kids who idolize the high school kids turn into those high school kids they used to idolize and come back and give back and be the idols to the young kids? Well, I was the principal when our little bear cats, who are now our mighty bear cats, were here at the elementary school. It's so rewarding for me to watch the high school students now come back and see them helping in the car lines uh, on game days. They come out and help us uh, being a high school helper, helping with our annual pep rally every year. We have our varsity come and do a pep rally with the varsity cheer. And we always have the middle school band walk over uh, and they help us with field day. So it's a lot of fun to watch them come over and help our littles. And most of all, I love seeing our little bear cats faces light up when our high school uh, varsity uh, students come over on our campus. Our boys and girls just look up to them like they're superstars. Yeah, that's something that's just always going to be the case. I remember when I first moved to town, fourth grade, anytime I got a chance to see the, you know, the, the Bearcats, the varsity players, or even, even the JV, I mean, anybody in high school who was playing football, that's yeah. who we looked up to playing peewee football. That's who we wanted to be like. Um, so it was not a whole lot about any college football players or pro football players. Most of the time it was when we were playing peewee football, we were wanting to be you know, we we're pretending we were somebody on the varsity team. So it's cool to, to see that interaction um, with the varsity team and the young kids now. Yes. Yeah. Goes me. So you, I think you have a son on the team. I do. Part of being part of the Bearcat Moms. I remember when I was in high school, how much time and effort they put forth in um, making sure we had just an awesome experience. So tell me some of the things that y'all are doing for the boys and how much fun is it to be 
an actual part of your son's experience along the way? Well, being a bear cat mom is awesome. Uh, a bear cat mom is one of the most fulfilling jobs that I have. Uh, one of the main reasons is my son is a senior sh this year. Uh, so uh, I'm excited to get to spend as much time with him as possible. Uh, but bear cat moms do all kinds of things. Uh, they make goodie bags each week uh, for all the varsity players, uh, decorating the varsity locker room each week, uh, helping with meals and waters on away games. Um, and our, our main goal as a Bearcat mom is to show our overall support for our Bearcats however we can. We're just there for our coaches, our players, and our trainers however we're needed. Well, Chance Kirby had a lot of good things to say about all the, the, the you know, y'all did some things for Aston before and after his surgery to make him feel, you know, feel the love. He recommended we talk to y'all, I think, because, I mean, as a parent, I'm sure he appreciated it a ton. Um, so, you know, like I said, my experience with the Bearcat Moms coming in, uh, coming into some decorations certain days, you know, the goodie bags the mornings of, and just all the cool things, and it was kind of a, we didn't actually do it together per se, but the bonding of my mom getting to be a part of that experience was so cool. Yes, for sure. So how, if, you know, somebody's listening and their son's soon to be in high school or maybe they're in high school and they just weren't aware, how would somebody join the Bearcat Moms? Well, we meet every Monday. So we uh, try to post every uh, week on Facebook. Uh, letting them know that we meet at the high school in the cafeteria every uh, Monday at 630 during uh, the school season. And um, we just encourage that everybody come out and be a part. Uh, it's fun. We want uh, all the parents to get involved and be a part of the uh, watching their, uh, their children uh, participate in sports. Well, that we have uh, another question here in regards to kind of the district. Uh, so, John? Yeah, Mr. Matters, so, um, you've seen, uh, I'm sure, all the growth in Aubrey and Salina and the surrounding communities, and looks like the, the time for Pilot Point to uh, explode here is I I inevitable. It's, it's not upon us. So, are you excited or nervous, or how do you, how do you feel about the projected uh, growth headed towards Pilot Point? Well, I honestly, I am really excited about the growth coming our way. I think uh, Pilot Point has a lot to offer, and I feel like our school district is already making great strides uh, for the future growth that we see coming, and I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds for our district and our community. I agree. You know, it's just a matter of time before it grows, and, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to see it. You start with the school district getting prepared and, and trying to be proactive. So, Amen. Yes. We thank you for your time tonight. Um, like I said, thanks for what you do for the Bearcat Moms. And, you know, that just every year they're always, they're always there. They're always helping. They're always doing cool things. So thanks for being a part of that. And uh, just, you know, just in case I hadn't told you, from personal experience, I probably didn't tell my mom or the Bearcat Moms enough at the time how much I appreciate it. So, you know, you're appreciated for sure. So, Well, thank you. And thank you all for what you do, too. We enjoy listening to you every week. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. Well, that'll do it for our interview with Miss Strip Matter here. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with the preview to the Whitesboro game. Hey Bearcat fans, living in North Texas, you know all about bad weather. When bad weather does strike, look no further than James Floyd's Custom Roofing and Construction. Custom Roofing and Construction has built their business off of quality work and customer referrals. Let their friendly and knowledgeable staff ensure the project runs smoothly from start to finish. You can visit Custom Roofing and Construction on their website, customroofingdallas.com, or give them a call at 214-274-8353. And we're back on the Custom Roofing and Construction Bearcat pregame show. It was nice visiting with Miss Strip Matter of the Bearcat Moms. Brings me back a lot of memories from my time with the Bearcat Moms and in my playing days. But back to, to modern day. So we're through three district games, and the district standings are unveiling exactly as we expected. Top three positions going into this week is Brock on top. We're tied with Brock up there, both at 3-0 and in the district. In the three spot is Whitesboro, who's 2-1. Um, this matchup, 
is probably going to be the matchup that decides the two or three seed coming out of this district. Barring any surprises throughout the rest of the way, or maybe the Bearcats can pull an upset on uh, the final home game of the year. But at this point, it looks like this may be the deciding game for second or third. Whitesboro is 3-3 three and three on the season, but what's interesting to me about the 3-3 three and three record is their three wins are not impressive at all. Overtime win against Bells, and then wins over Ponder and Boy. The losses are actually considerably more impressive, if that's even possible, that a loss could be more impressive than a win. They did have a big loss to Aubrey, but Aubrey's 6-1, and one, and they've only lost to Salina this year, so they're playing good football. They have a 28-7 loss to Gunner. You know, Gunner beat us 59-6. Now, I don't think Gunner is 53 points better than us on a, on, you know, a more normal situation. But that night in particular, and that is what matters, they were 53 points better than us. And then they lost 42-21 to to Brock. But that was a tie game deep into the third quarter. They were winning at points in that game in the, in the first half. So this might be a ridiculous statement. But Whitesboro's losses make me more nervous than any win. With what you know about this Whitesboro team, what do you think we'll be facing from them on Friday night? Yeah, Ryan, I think you said it. I mean, they, they seem to play up and down based on their on their competition level, so I'm certainly expecting a, a battle. Um, Whitesboro returns uh, nine starters on offense and seven on defense this year. Uh, compared to the previous year, it was five on offense and four on defense, so they're, they're certainly – a more experienced uh, team this season, and just by that you would think that they were, were going to be improved over over last year's bunch. And offensively, um, they like to run the spread offense. They use multiple formations, a lot of three and four wide uh, wide receiver sets. Uh, they really like to run a lot of wide receiver screens, get the ball out to the edges, and then they'll run uh, some middle screens with their slot receivers. Uh, the quarterback is a big, he's a big kid uh, with a real good, real good arm. He's he's good at, at making plays. Um, he'll run the quarterback power and option read, uh, but he likes to throw the ball around and he's real accurate. We'll get into him and the players of the game. And then, uh, you know, they're fairly balanced, but they don't mind sling the ball around. Um, against Brock, their numbers weren't that impressive, but they did throw for 160 yards versus only 37 yards on the ground. Uh, defensively, uh, they run a 3-4, but they'll walk down an outside linebacker and make it look more like a 4-3. They aren't afraid to, to blitz their linebackers. Uh, number six is one of the best ones I've seen. Um, I'll, I'll talk about him more in the players of the game as well. But the secondary is usually in cover three, which means they're kind of in a zone. They're trying to keep everything underneath. Their defense can be stingy, though, and it, uh, they've, they've caused a lot of turnovers on the season. I believe the thing that kept them in that gunner game is they – they had three turnovers in that game, um, and then uh, against Brock, and that keeping that a fairly close uh, score. They had a fumble recovery and interception uh, against Brock, which ultimately you know helped that game probably be closer than any of us any of us uh, expected. Ryan. Yeah, it was closer than we expected. This season has uh, kind of mirrored last season through three weeks into district. We're 3-0, looking like we're really finding our groove, maybe finding our identity. Last year, we did have our backup quarterback playing in the Paradise game, but still looked really well. Then we came home to play a game against Whitesboro, and we laid an absolute egg that night to Whitesboro. Um, you know, trying to avoid that this season, what steps do we need to take? How do we avoid that sort of disappointing performance like we had last year? Yeah, I mean, you said it, it was probably our, our most disappointing showing of the season uh, last season. One thing I noticed, and and back in the 90s, we didn't really view Whitesboro as, as a rivalry. We, we My teams never really played them. Uh, they were actually a, a division above us in classification. Uh, but uh, football-wise, I, I think we always thought we would take care of them if we did play them. But, uh, but the borough, as they're calling themselves nowadays, always seems to play up in the Battle of the Bearcats, so I expect them to certainly bring it again on Friday night. And uh, for me, Ryan, I think we'll have to just match their intensity and uh, keep try to keep momentum on our side and take care of the football and, uh, you know, hopefully win that, that turnover battle. But certainly it's it's going to come out to intensity and, and, and playing a, a meaningful game with a lot of passion because I think, you know, Whitesboro, 
views this thing as a, as a big time rivalry game. And as, as we saw last year, they're going to be up for it. Yeah. Whitesboro has played us really tough the last two seasons. Our last trip to Whitesboro in 2019, we had some adversity in the first half. Coach David used some old school tactics to get it turned around in the second half, and we were able to pull out a win. Last year at Massey, though, we didn't quite have quite the luck getting it turned around, and we ended up losing that game. Going into Friday night's matchup, who are your players to watch? Yeah, there's quite a few kids from Whitesboro. Um, I'm going to focus on a few. Number 34, Asher Contreras. He's a small running back. He's kind of in the Darren Sproles mode, if anybody remembers him from Kansas State and Philadelphia Eagles. Had a long career in the NFL. Uh, very quick, shifty, small running back. Um, he's their leading, looks like healthy, right, uh, running back with 43 carries and 227 yards. He's averaging 5.3 yards per carry. Um, before that, they had a number four, uh, junior Grayson Ledbetter. But he didn't play against Brock, so I'm not sure what's going on with that kid. But he did have 424 rushing yards in four games and nine touchdowns. Um, so if he's healthy, watch out for number four if he plays on Friday. And then uh, they've got a big receiving target, number 14, wide receiver, defensive back, Jake Jake Hermes. He's uh, listed at 6'5", 190, so he's a huge target. It's going to be a tough matchup for our corners. He's got 17 receptions for 285 yards and two touchdowns on the season. And then they've got another uh, favorite target, uh, wide receiver, and he's also a linebacker, Jace Sanders. He's listed at 5'10", 170-pound uh, junior. He's the favorite target of the, of the quarterback. He lines up pretty much everywhere. He's got 20 receptions for 257 yards and three touchdowns on the season. And um, last year I highlighted him because I think he was, uh, he's a rugby-style punter, so we've got to watch out for him to, to sneak it because he's so quick um, as well. Um, and then their, their main guys are their quarterback, number 10, uh, quarterback defensive back, Mac Harper. He's 6'3", 185. He's a junior. He's uh, 78 for 122 on the season with 1,050 passing yards, 64% completion rate, seven touchdowns to only two interceptions. So the guy's really accurate. He's done a good job leading the team, he, and he's 6'3". He's a big, he's a big hoss. He's hard to bring down in the running game, so we're going to have to really tackle that guy. Um, for our Pilot Point Bearcats, it's the usual suspects, of course. we got Ish Harris, number 21, our senior uh, running back, defensive back, slash linebacker. He's got um, 74 carries and 492 yards on the season now, seven touchdowns. And, of course, he's a force on defense. And, and I, 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 I'm kind of predicting that we're going to have to line him up on number 14, maybe in key situations, because that guy, like I said, is 6'5", 190-pound uh, wide receiver. He's a huge target, so we may have to – make some adjust, adjustments there with Ish out on, on him or Aiden or somebody uh, if, if uh, number 14 starts having a day against us. And then, uh, of course, Wyatt Smith, our junior quarterback, number five, uh, he's now got 216 rushing yards on the season, averaging 5.1 yards per carry and four touchdowns on the ground. So he's starting to get his legs under him. And, of course, we know he's 55% uh, – Completion percentage rating, nine, nine touchdowns to only two interceptions. So why it's been great for us all season and uh, been very solid back there at the helm. And then, of course, defensively, he's capable of, of making those pick sixes like he did against Gunner. And then, uh, man, our guy, we, have, we can't, can't talk enough about him here lately. Number one, Aiden Cox, of course, 6'3", uh, senior, wide receiver, defensive end, do-it-all, kicker. Um, Man, he's just killing it with 27 receptions, 620 yards, six touchdowns. He just he's doing it all, and I see he's getting some love from Dave Campbell's Texas High School Football on Twitter and everything else. So, uh, man, Aiden, Aiden's uh, arrow is pointing up for sure. That's it for the players of the game, right? Yeah, I've been telling anyone and everyone who will listen they need to check out Aiden Cox. He's got size, speed, athleticism. He's a dog, man. We have to get him some love from some scouts. Um, for Whitesboro, you touched on number 14, Hermes from Whitesboro. He's a tall wide receiver who can probably take over a game. Last week, we showed a willingness to send two defenders to take out a receiving threat. So our defense is, uh, will adjust if we need to, which is a good sign. But now let's get into kind of a staple of our pregame show, and let's do uh, John's three keys of the game. Yes, sir, Ryan. Key number three. The key number three, I've got. We need to win, uh, win, win third downs. So against uh, against Brock, 
Weisberg was only two for nine on third down conversions. And uh, Brock, Brock did a good job of getting their defense off the field there and uh, letting their offense kind of dictate that game, especially late in, in the second half. And I think our, our pilot point Bearcats uh, really need to do the same. Key number two. So key number two, I've got we need to uh, win the line of scrimmage. I mean, it seems obvious, but I mean, if you remember back to last year, um, the best news for us is that that big number seven, <clears throat> big number seventy-seven, Wade Graves, he graduated last year. Thank the Lord. Because if you remember that guy, we were calling him the grave digger by the end of the game. The guy was 6'4", 300 pound man child, and he just seemed to, to dominate the line of scrimmage. And I don't know if he had a, you know, a career game or whatever it was, but man, he was, he was outstanding uh, last year. They don't have him, but they do have a number 79, Cody Vessels. He's got 12 pancakes on the year. Uh, he's, a, he's a big junior defensive line, offensive lineman. So we got to take care of that guy and we got to win the line of scrimmage. And then uh, key number one. So key number one, Ryan, is jump around from House of Pain. It's the uh, 19, 1992 classic, cult classic, another one in my wheelhouse. And it goes, uh, dun, dun, dun. Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. I came to win, battle me, that's a sin. I won't ever slack up, punch you better back up. Trying to play the role, you the whole little act up. Get up, stand up, come on, throw your hands up, get the feeling, jump across the ceiling. So, uh, full John Little rap segment, let's go. That's as much as you get today, Ron. Uh, <laughs> I, I still, I still, uh, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm still good once as I ever was. Now a Toby Keith reference. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, ironically, uh, there's a line in there that says the whole crew, uh, the whole crew to act up, and you know we're, we're gonna. That kind of means our whole team's gonna need to bring the energy in this game for sure. Um, so we're gonna have to be jumping around, but also. Um, you know, from a standpoint of that big, big wide receiver, we may have to win the jump ball, and uh, Crew Chandler may be involved in that. So, uh, you know, our corners and our secondary is going to have to play big because they've got a they got a little size advantage with that wide receiver. But again, uh, Whitesboro is going to be juiced up uh, like they were last season, and I remember them celebrating like they just kind of won a playoff game there at Massey Stadium, even though it was just a regular season game. Um, but we've got to, you know, we got to match that en energy and uh, hopefully exceed that on Friday night. Well, that's all we've got for the custom roofing and construction Bearcat pregame show. So we'll be live from the roof of the press box at Bearcat Stadium in Whitesboro, Texas, Friday night at 7:30. Um, so make sure you're following Bearcat social media, subscribing to the YouTube page, following us on Twitter, Facebook, all all of the social media. And like I said, so from the roof Friday night in Whitesboro, it's going to be perfect weather, clear and cool, first fall evening of the year. Um, that's all we've got for tonight, so I'll see you Friday night. Go Bearcats! Go Bearcats! I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you.